Corinthians chapter number 2. We'll be reading verses 1 through 14. When you find your place, if you're able, will you stand with us for the reading of God's Word? 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, verses 1 through 14. The Bible says, verse 1, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, or of the princes of this world that come to naught. Verse 7, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for they had known it. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, Neither have it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the word which man's wisdom teacheth, teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Let us pray. Lord, we do love you. And Lord, we are thankful that when we see you, it will be worth it all. And God, we do pray for our pastor this morning as he, as he preaches. I pray that you fill him with your power. And uh, Lord, I do pray also for uh, the Waldrops. Lord, I pray that you would help Mrs. Waldrop to recover quickly from whatever it is that's ailing her. And uh, Lord, I do pray uh, for if there's someone here that doesn't know you as Savior. God, I pray that today would be the day that they come to know you. And Lord, we thank you for the Word of God. We thank you for the, uh, the power that it has. It's quicker and sharper than two edged sword. And Lord, we thank you for the healing power that it has. And God, I do pray that you would help us to be spirit-filled listeners as we heard, hear the word of God preached. And God, help us to leave out of here better than when we came. We ask these things in your name. Amen. You may be seated. <coughs>
I get to work with some of the best staff people in all the world. And it's a delight. It just is a delight. You know, when the Spirit bears witness with your spirit that you are a child of God. Brother Richard Kuma, good to have you here. Here's an old-time member also. And uh, God just drawing people back. And thank the Lord for his drawing power. Thank God for his saving power. Thank God for his keeping power. We're kept by the power of God, 1 Peter 1, 5. Don't forget that. And then this morning, I have not seen nor ear heard nor entered the heart of man what God hath gone to prepare for those who love him. And so the theme today is about heaven. I hope you know that already by reading these things. But the title is something a little different. You'll catch it when we go through it today. It's the deep things of God. It's the mysterious things that God, you know, a mystery is something once hidden but now revealed. And there are some deep things that, you know, unless we have the Spirit of God, we cannot understand the Bible. The natural man, the Scripture says in verse number 14, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. So you can't even know, you can't even start to comprehend the things of the Bible or the great mysteries of the Bible or the deep mysteries, the deep down uh, things of God until the Holy Spirit of God enters into your life and he teaches and leads us and guides us into all things, amen? And so these things become apparent. And so when verse number 10 says, but God hath revealed them to us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. It's the Spirit of the Lord that reveals uh, these deep things. Amen. And then the previous verse was talking about heaven. Okay, you understand. And so God says it's going to take the Spirit of God, as you read the Word of God, to illuminate your hearts, to understand, to enlighten you, to understand what heaven is going to be like. These deep things, that, these mysterious things about the other side, okay? We're talking about the end times as we're on them. We're, we're here. We're there. We're, it's, it's on us. All the things that's been preached to us thus far and been prophesied about, the fulfillment is coming into pass as we are, are living, as the very present moment right now. But the next step, okay, I want to I set our affections on things above. I don't want to think about the nasty now and now. I could care less what's going on on CNN, Fox News, ABC, CBS, all the infightings and, and the clashes and the warfare going on in our country. I, I don't want to even think about any of that. And you don't either. And that's why you don't come to church to hear any of that stuff. Okay? We come to church to hear about Jesus. We come to church to set our affections uh, on things above where rust and moth are not corrupt and thieves do not break through and steal. You understand that the more we talk about Jesus, the more that we learn about his love, and the more that we think about eternal things, it will help us. Amen? It, it will comfort our hearts. And there is not a friend like the lowly Jesus, let me tell you. Oh, when they were singing that song, I thought I was going to get uh, raptured, as my mother would say. She said, I could just feel myself going up, son. I could just feel myself going up. And so... Uh, this morning, the deep things, okay, the deep subjects, especially, isn't heaven something deep for us because it's mysterious, isn't it? Uh, you know, we haven't seen it. We can't touch it. We haven't been there just yet, but we know it's real. Let me tell you how I know it's real, because Jesus has never lied to us. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. I hope you're prepared today. I hope you're ready for heaven, because... It is the next age, amen? I mean, after the millennial age, I mean, heaven is awaiting us. And may I say, you know, it cannot, nothing on this earth can compare. I know us mortals. I know us with finite minds. We can't think about the infinite. But we can't think about the eternal because we're all just fixated on what's going on here. We can barely make it through a day, you know? By faith, we do it. With God's help, we make it, don't we? But can you imagine living with God? Can you imagine throughout all of eternity the joy that will be in heaven when all the saints of God, I may have mentioned it uh, last Sunday, 
But, you know, what it really inspired me about this message today was our TBI lesson, and I, I'm having my students uh, uh, give me some points on what they think about heaven and what it will be like and, and all the things that we'll even talk about some of them today. But I remember not too many years ago, Sister Nancy probably remembers the big tent meeting we had before this uh, building was built here. We put a huge circus tent right out here, right on this spot. And we were kind of testing the ground, uh, so to speak. And I borrowed this uh, big gospel tent from an evangelist friend uh, that I knew. And I was carrying it back to North Carolina. And I had my wife with me. And I said, honey, I said, while we're up here, we're, we're getting close to Asheville. I said, uh, how'd you like to go see the Biltmore Castle? She said, honey, we've been there before. I said, yeah, but I, I, I want to see it again. And it was around Christmas time, and, and uh, it was beautiful. And they had garnished uh, this big, nice home. It's the la America's largest home. The Vanderbilts owned it. And uh, the beautiful, you know, uh, wreaths and such, and, and uh, all, the, all the beautiful Christmas lights and tinsels and such, and just a beautiful thing. And uh, we got inside, just inside the door, and there was a seat there. And I planted myself on that seat. My wife, uh, she said, are you coming, honey? I said, no. I said, go along with the tour. I said, I'm just going to sit here. And little did she know, I was mesmerized. I was just sitting there in amazement. I was thinking about 1 Corinthians 2.9. I have not seen nor ear heard, nor entered into the heart of man what God has gone to prepare for those who love him. I was thinking about, look, if it's this beautiful here, and this is America's largest home, What's my mansion going to look like over in glory? I was sitting on that seat. I did not move, Sister Nancy. I sit, I planted myself right there. I was like the big-eyed boy at the fair. I did not move. I couldn't take it all in. My mind wouldn't wrap around it. And I was sitting here thinking, oh, tears were just streaming down my face. And I'm saying, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I mean, they've got a tennis court, built-in tennis court downstairs, and, and they've got bowling alleys and all that stuff, and I'm thinking, you know, servants and, and these filthy rich people as compared to, you know, earthly riches, uh, they were living pretty, pretty high, wide, and handsome. Nothing like we'll be like in heaven. And guess who'll be serving us when we get there? The old song said that he'll gird an apron and serve us. Oh, listen, brethren, we've met to worship and adore the Lord our God. I love that song. I love the old songs of the faith. Will you pray with all your power while we try to preach thy word? All is vain unless the Spirit of the Holy One come down. My children sang that song to my granddaddy. He was on his dying week. And I said, granddaddy, the kids are here. He said, I can't see them. Let me feel them. And he felt them. And I said, we're going to sing you a song, granddaddy, and I'm going to give you a verse and pray. I said, which one do you want them to sing? He said, brother, we've met to worship and adore the Lord our God. That was his favorite song. Do you have a, a favorite hymn of the faith? Boy, they begin to sing, and they're still singing today. Jackie and Jenny and Johnny and Juju singing, singing, singing for the Lord. But my thought is today, one day we'll meet all in one accord. What a happy grand reunion day. What a beautiful day that will be. With my Jesus, I will see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by the hand, leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. Do you really believe in a place called heaven? These are deep things for us to think about, but boy, I like to let my mind go there, don't you? I, I just like to think on these things because there's so much hurt here. There, there's so much crime here. There, there's so much violence here. There, there's so many uh, things that have gone wrong and gone south, and I don't really know, unless the Lord touched the situation, if it's ever going to be the same again. But I long for a place called heaven. I long to be there with my Savior. I long to see his face. I long to see the one who gave me his amazing grace. Oh, I tell you, there's nothing like it to get a glimpse of the glory 
of the Lord. I pray that you'll find it today. Why? Because we're just pilgrims and strangers here uh, in this old sinful world. And we're, we're just, this world is not our home, as the old song said. We're just passing through this life. Heaven is my home. I don't know about you. It's, I'm, I've claimed it. It's my home. I'm going to ask a question. This is really one way you know if heaven is your home. This is one of the evidences now. Listen, you ever get homesick and you really don't know why you're homesick? You ever get lonely and you really don't know why you're so lonely? Maybe it is you're lonely and homesick for your real home, heaven. This earth just can't satisfy you. Things, possessions, money, wealth, prestige, power, position. None of those things matter. Because in heaven, you know what? Everybody will be happy over there. No more sin, no more suffering, no more sorrow. Nothing, no diseases, no more germs. Somebody praise God. Won't it be wonderful? I may not ever get to the message today. Uh, beside myself, y'all forgive me. Number one today, if, if we are of heaven and we'll return there, why do we not long for our Savior? Why don't we long and look for Him every day? The Bible says that He'll reward us. The Bible teaches us here in verse number 9 that He will reward all those that love Him and love His appearing. I believe that. I believe that he's coming for his own. He's coming for his bride. And what a mar- Listen, that marriage in heaven is going to be great. It's going to be glorious. The marriage supper of the Lamb will be there. Oh, we'll be like Jesus. We'll be like him. Oh, thank God. You've got to know that verse in 1 John chapter number 3 and verse number 2. It gives us some insight. It says that we'll be like him and we will be as he is in his life. We'll no longer take on uh, the, the mortal. We'll no longer take on our earthly image. We will have, uh, we'll have a heavenly look, okay? The glory of God will be upon us. And, and uh, you know, we, we just, uh, uh, you know, I think about Jesus when he met with the, with the guys up in the upper room. And, of course, the, the early church were there, all 120 of them. They were praying for Pentecost. And Jesus in his glorified body, the doors were locked for fear of the Jews. And Jesus comes walking in to that upper room in his glorified body. Brother Jagada, and nobody opened the door. We will be like him. We will be as he is. Which means that our travel in heaven will be like the Lord. We won't have to open a door. We won't have to get in a spaceship and go from one uh, planet to the other planet. Amen. We won't have to get our rocket boosters ready. No, none of that. No. Jesus wanted to be there with his church, and he was there. I can't explain that. That's deep. This is great, mysterious things we're talking about this morning. I had not seen, these mortal eyes had not seen any of that. You know, through the, the, the Hubble telescope, we're able to see out there uh, so many, many, uh, you know, uh, light years out. <laughs> but can you imagine seeing through the glorified eyes that the Lord Jesus gives us one day? That's one reason you can't, you can't really appreciate heaven without your glorified eyes. You won't be able to appreciate it. You, you see this glistening a uh, city over there on the hill, and uh, you know you'll think it's some kind of uh, Star Wars or something you've seen on the movies, spaceship, Star Wars, uh, Star Trek. You'll think something's going. What is all this? But through the glorified eyes, you'll be able to understand. Hey, this is not like any movie I have ever seen. This is real. Pinch me. Are we there yet? Huh? I'm saying. I'm saying, listen, uh, th- th- there's something to this, uh, this, this eternal life that God has gone to prepare for those who love Him. And the Scripture says that we'll rule and reign with Him forever. Forever. Now, here's a good question. I'm, we're, we're talking about the deep things of God this morning. 
who are the faithful going to be ruling over? Who are we going to be reigning over? What kind of order is this going to be? I know there's a millennial age, but it also goes on to say that we'll rule and reign with him forever. It gets my mind to wondering, none of us really know, okay? These are some of the things that we'll learn once we arrive, but at least God gives us little hints and suggestions along the way. And the Holy Spirit takes that and helps us to start, it provokes us to think about, hey, what about my eternal existence? You know, we're so consumed uh, uh, with just paying the bills and getting by and, 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 and uh, dragging up to church uh, a little late, but we made it, preacher. Wonderful. But in heaven, we won't ever be late for the Lord's presence. We'll be there, I promise you. We'll be, we can, we'll be, uh, we'll be on the edge of our seat. We'll, we'll be sitting on, uh, you know, just anticipating expe expectation. We'll be sitting there waiting to hear the words that our Savior will give us each and every day. By the way, there's no night there. I mean, there'll be no need of the sun there because Jesus will be there. I love that name, don't you? There is no name like the name Jesus. You know, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow down at his feet. All the nations of the earth during the millennial age will have to come by and all those that hated him and all those that, uh, that, that, did, that never did come to Christ, they'll have to come by him and they'll have to bow at his feet. That's what my Bible says. So if we are of heaven and we'll return to heaven, read John 17 sometime. He said, they're, they're not of the earth even as I'm not of the earth, Lord. He's talking to the Father. This is not our home. Amen. We're, we're from uh, where God is from. He gave us life, did he not? And some say that, you know, with the scripture that, that I gave you about, we'll be as he is and we'll be like him. Some say because of that scripture, we'll all be 33.3 years of age in heaven. I don't know. That's conjecture. I don't know. I'm just, but some have said this, you know, there, uh, there's no babies there. We'll be like him be like him. Perhaps that's true. Again, a conjecture, but uh, one of my favorite songs that, uh, you know, I've, I love it so much. I love singing about heaven. I've heard of a land on a faraway strand. Tis the beautiful home of the soul. Built by Jesus on high where we never shall die. Tis a land where we'll never grow old. Never grow old. Never grow old. In a land where we never grow old. You say, preacher, that's pretty shallow Christianity, all those little hymns and phrases that you have and those petty little cliches you have up there, preacher. Really? It's pretty deep if you want to know the truth about it. It's simple, but it is profound when we think about this subject that we're talking about this morning. I'm talking about these deep things, these great mysteries. How does God make and fashion a body that never ages, the song as it was sung? Do we have songs being written like that today? I think not. How will God make us a glorified creature so that uh, through all the endless ages, nothing is said much about our future, uh, the future age or the uh, heavenly age in the Bible, but, but how will we live throughout all of that? Infinitum. I like to think about it. By the way, the, same, the opposite is also true, that God will fashion a, a body for you if you do not go to heaven. I have to warn you here while I'm preaching about heaven because Jesus said more about hell than he did heaven. You have to suffer throughout all of eternity. I wouldn't go to hell today for not one person sitting in this room. I'd say, excuse me, pastor, I can't wait for the invitation. I want to go to heaven. I want to make my vote for Jesus. Uh, I, I want to make my election and call and share here this morning. I choose Jesus. You better do that. You, you better pull the lever for Jesus. Uh, amen. Number two, and I'm, on, I'm trying to hurry this morning. I'm just so caught up. You folks prayed with all your power. I know you did. Why don't we get down thinking uh, why don't we get down thinking of our de declension here, okay? Why don't we do this? Why don't we think of our ascension there? In other words, uh, don't be in the decline mode. Be in the ascending thoughts. 
Set your affections on those things, okay? And uh, think on that which is pure and lovely of good report. There be any virtue, if there be any praise. Think on these things. Acts chapter number 1, you'll see that, that, that Jesus is ascending up into heaven. Get a picture of that because that will happen real soon for us. He came and got his Old Testament saints, you remember? And he led captivity captive. Read, read Ephesians chapter 4. And he descended that he might ascend with them. He led them from paradise right on over into heaven. He's also going to do the same for us New Testament saints. He's coming and he's taking us home. Amen. Which means what a Savior that we have. Not only did he save our uh, ever-dying soul, but he saves us from our sins, yes, but he literally saves us from this wicked world that we live in. He's taking us out of here. Amen, Brother Wade? Hey, think of the multiplied millions of people. Now, uh, Jesus of Christ, of course, uh, the, the numbers are an innumerable number in heaven, the Scripture claims. And I believe the Bible, don't you? Just think of the thousands that, uh, you know, were here uh, when our Savior was here and they thronged Him. But think of the millions that will parade by Him in heaven. And they'll worship Him. You see, it's one thing to have faith. But it's another thing to make sure that the object of your faith is always Jesus Christ. Even the Holy Spirit, he, will not, uh, he does not point anybody to himself. He points uh, everyone to Jesus Christ. And so we must also point uh, people to Jesus Christ. And so, uh, you know, every knee shall bow. And I think of Psalm number 95 when it says that, uh, that we're to kneel before the Lord, our God, our Maker. We better get used to kneeling here because we're going to be kneeling and praying and worshiping and getting in that humble position. And that's, that's how we'll live throughout eternity. We're going to be living, worshiping Christ, and, and we'll have a glorified body. You ever notice how you get a little tired even in a worship service? You get wore out, up and down, up and down, praising and uh, moving around, and choir going in, choir going out, musicians moving around. But when we get to heaven, we'll have a glorified body. We'll just worship Him throughout eternity. We'll just worship Him throughout eternity. What about the fine linen? I'm just kind of get, just provoking you. Maybe I should do it in two parts, but in Revelation number 19, the Bible says that the fine linen is our apparel, and it's the righteousness of the saints. It's not our righteous deeds, but it's imputed righteousness of God's love through Jesus Christ. In other words, we'll be clothed in that Shekinah glory of God. I mean, listen, uh, the fig leaves uh, hid the shame of Adam and Eve. But we'll have no shame and sin in heaven. And we'll be as he is. We'll be like him. And his glory will be all around us. It will clothe us. What a wonderful day. What a beautiful time it will be. I just can't hardly wait. Amen. I'm not getting up a busload to go today. But I'm certainly thankful that we have a place prepared for us. I mean, the body that will be glorified will be able to travel and unhindered uh, in our ability. Uh, and so uh, uh, the thought is today, the, the earth's gravitational pull will not be holding us back anymore. We'll be uninhibited. <laughs> we can do whatever we want to do. I mean, we'll be free finally to live and breathe uh, in freedom. I'm talking about full freedom, full throttle, whatever we desire. I'm saying, I have not seen nor ear heard nor entered into the heart of man what God has gone to prepare for those who love him. Then the third point, and lastly, thank you. He's tired of hearing about heaven. Can you imagine that? I'm kidding with you, Brother Theo. Do you believe that heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people? That verse I, I quoted to you from John 14 a while ago. Or do you believe that everyone will go to heaven like most people claim, most religions claim today, as long as you're good, you'll make it? Or do you believe, like the Scripture says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me? It's not just, listen, good people don't go to heaven. I only say people go to heaven. And so this is a lie of the devil, and this is the universalist idea that everybody is going to go to heaven. My friend, listen, Christ would have never come and suffered as he did and died on that cruel cross of Calvary if everyone's going to heaven already. Everyone's not going to heaven uh, uh, already. And so uh, the Bible says to lift up your eyes and look on the fields for their white 
already unto harvest. In other words, we're to look for souls that, that are going to uh, need Christ as their Savior. We're to, to uh, persuade them to be a Christian. Almost thou persuadest me, uh, King Agrippa, Agrippa said to Paul, and we're to have holy persuasion. Why? Without Christ. Listen, not one sin is going to slide under the door of heaven. Not one. All of our sins have to be covered in the crimson blood of our lovely Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and all those who place their full faith and trust in the finished work of the cross of Calvary. All those that call out upon his name, knowing he's the Savior, and knowing that they are the sinner, they shall be saved, according to Romans chapter 10 and verse number 13. Now, here's the deep part of this. Okay, that sounds simple, doesn't it? Yet so profound. But listen, this means in spite of what man tells you, man tries to complicate things, and God tries to simplify them. And God's simple plan of salvation is still very much simple this morning. Children can understand it. Then why can't you understand it, adults? Listen to this uh, verse. You'll find it in 1 Peter 3 and 9. God is not willing that one should perish but that all should come to repentance. You know the verse. Sounds simple, but it takes, listen, 2,000 years has gone by since that verse was written. And God has used the church to reach out into communities like ours to try to reach people, to bring them to a saving knowledge of His Son, Jesus Christ. So this is a mouthful, but it's so true that God's sovereign, our sovereign God, yes, He is, He's sovereign. Don't let that scare you. But he'll never superimpose himself over the free will of man. He'll never do it. He's a gentleman. He's not going to force anyone. That's what that means in everyday vernacular. He's not going to push you. He's not going to put you in a straitjacket. He's not going to pull you down the aisle. Some people are saying this, I'm just waiting for the Lord uh, to come to me. He's not going to do it. He's already come. He's already died on the cross. He's waiting for you to come to him. Come ye that labor and a heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me, for you shall find rest uh, for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen? And so listen, God did the hard part. All we do is the simple part in accepting what he did on that cross, accepting that he died and was buried. Three days later, thank God for Joseph of Arimathea. Thank God for the businessman that took care of the Lord's body. Otherwise, it would have been thrown to Gehenna. It would have been left out there for the dogs and the, all the, the, the ugly worms and stuff to decay the body. Can you imagine our Lord? Someone had mercy. Jesus had mercy on us. The Bible says this about mercy, and I love this. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Joseph was being merciful, wasn't he? He wanted a proper burial for our Lord's body. You know, we're, our Lord, we're the Lord's body today. That's why he loves us. He's the head and we're, we're, we're his body. And he orchestra, he's orchestrating all that he's trying to do from heaven today, from headquarters today. Headquarters is not Rome for me. Headquarters is not Nashville for me. Headquarters is not Laurel for me. Headquarters is not Nashville or Texarkana for me. Headquarters is heaven. And he is helping our local churches uh, to do what it is he wants them to do. I'm talking about his perfect will. One might say, preacher, I've been too bad. <clears throat> Jesus would never accept me. I'm the worst possible sinner who's ever lived on the earth. I cannot be saved. Well, can I say some good news to you today? The gospel is the good news. Jesus took Barnabas's, uh, Barabbas, excuse me. Jesus took Barabbas's place. He was a thief and a robber. He was a murderer. And did you know he's our substitute as well? He took your place. To I mean, he tasted death for every man, the Scripture said. He loves us all. He wants us all to have opportunity. He's not willing that even one should die and go to a devil's hell. Amen. And look, he justifies us when we get saved, which means that we're just as if we'd never sinned. And no one is predestined to heaven. No one is predestined to hell. It's our choice. God does not choose anyone to go to hell. He's not, look, he, he doesn't choose us to go to hell. He wants us to go to heaven. We choose. You'll never look at God and say, God, why did you send me to hell? No. 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 
We send ourselves there when we reject the Lord Jesus Christ. And so listen to this verse. The Bible says in Revelation 14, 11, I am trying to, to end it, say domino. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and the, his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. I'd rather call out upon the name of the Lord, I don't know about you, than receive that mark here or here, a little chip in your hand. It's coming, folks. It's coming, folks. You better, you better remember I told you that. In Isaiah 33, verse number 14, who, who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? And who among us shall dwell with everlasting torment? Say, so, preacher, why would you throw that little extra in about hell and you're preaching about heaven because I surely don't want anybody to go to, to hell and if you're not going to heaven there's no other place there's no Hades there's no purgatory there's no limbo you'll not find one of those words in the Bible there's only heaven or hell you're either saved or lost you're either going to be with the Savior throughout eternity how'd you like to be with old uh, you know uh, pigeon-toed, hairy-legged guy down there in the downstairs department. How'd you like to be with him throughout all eternity? I'm talking about the one that's given you the hard time on earth. How'd you like to live with him who beat you up and made you feel evil about yourself and condemned you all through life and told you you could never do anything? I'm surely not wanting to be anywhere near him. He's wicked. We ought to praise God every day that our name's on the, uh, in the Lamb's Book of Life. Every time I get to Revelation, I believe it is chapter number uh, 20, verse number 15, uh, and it says, uh, and he was cast into the lake of fire, which burns the fire and brimstone. I don't know if y'all shout when y'all read through the scriptures. Oh, I have a hallelujah, I, I have a praise hallelujah time when I read where his place is going to be. The one who's given us the hard problems. You know why heaven's going to be so sweet? We're finally going to be free from him. <laughs> Woohoo! Have you ever felt like some days if everything was coming at you, I mean at warp speed, and everything was bad? You ever have those days? I've had some here lately. And I said, devil, get thee behind me. That is you, devil. I know that is you. You're not wanting us to have church on Sunday. You're not wanting anybody to get saved. You're not wanting us to have one more person. You know when that last person gets saved? Jesus is coming to take us home. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his face. Sing it with me. The one who saved me by his grace when I look me by the hand there it is the leads me through the promised land. Come on now. What a day, glorious day that will be. We have time to sing the chorus. What a day. Come on, let's stand. That will be. Come on. When my Jesus I shall see. Look, come on. Upon his face. I can't hear you. The one. You're only going to live forever. You're only going to live with Jesus forever. Can't you sing and praise him this morning? And leads me through the promised land. Come on. What a day. Baptist, if you want to praise God, go ahead. That will be 